Okay, so we're going to continue. I am making um, a white shape that's on top of my master shape to get an overall background outline, right? And so I can do that by just adjusting and adding these anchor points as I need them and changing them. So it's a lot of pen tool again. But it gives me full control. And if I hold down Command, I can adjust the sides individually of the curves. I can even see little errors in my master shape, so I can unlock that if I want. Come on, give it to me. There we go. I'm just going to smooth this out a little bit. By changing that side into a curve. And then how do you have a straight on one side and a curve on another? You just bring the anchor all the way, or the what's called the Bezier handle all the way on top of the point. Okay, now I can lock that again. Whoops. Go back to what I was working on. So if you're going for just perfection, you're just making each anchor point work way. I'm going to go ahead and lock my image as well. Okay, so I've made a pretty simple path here. How do I make it work for the rest? Well, I use the pen tool and then I add anchors to it. So I double click on it and I add anchors when I need them, right? And kind of move them around. And this way it's like cutting out your logo as opposed to drawing it with lines. And that's a much better way to think about it because vectors are not line-based, right? You're doing completed paths, filled paths. And to get better at this, you can use that paths tutorial. Add some more anchor points as I'm working around it. And this makes sure that you're only creating the anchor points you need. That's the advantage of this approach. If you don't mind making too many anchor points, you can use the pencil tool to kind of give you your straight paths. But that's not always a good idea.
Yes, I haven't done that yet. So for expediency, I'm just going to play with this curve. Whoops, not that one. I'll add another anchor point so I can control it a little bit better. Okay. And so I have that contained white shape on top of a, oh, let me fix the jawline. Now here's the only problem with this program is that once I subtract it from the one underneath, I lose some of my controls. I wish that wasn't the case, but that appears to be the case. So I want to try to fine tune it as much as I can before I subtract from it. I guess I don't even need to worry about erasing the tongue. What I'm doing is making a shape that I'm going to subtract from the other, the master shape, right? So I'm making a white, what's called a fill path in Illustrator. Going on with this black shape. Let me fix this. Oh, it is the white. Okay, good. So I can do that. Okay. Sorry, thinking to myself a little bit. Just little inconsistencies need to be resolved. And again, we're not going for absolute perfection here. I'm telling myself that more than I'm telling you that. But I want you to see how that full control is possible given the time. All right, let's see overall how this looks, knowing I still need to do some outline work on that side. Still don't love the curve of the skull there. There we go. I think I can live with that. All right. So now what do I do? Well, this is an important step that you do in vector design a lot. Before I merge them, I want to make copies of these master layers, right? So I could, to make it really clear to you, I can turn off every other path. So you can see really clearly what I'm doing behind all of them. Again, this is what I would do first thing as a professional, I would do the complex, all the really hard pin work first before I put like the easy circles in for the eyes and the details. It's just a good design basic to work from the biggest objects to the most detailed objects, right? 
So now I just have these two things on top of my sketch. Before I subtract one from the other to get that outline shape. And then of course I'll subtract more from these parts. Um, I want to duplicate both of them. So I right click and I duplicate. But notice how above duplicate you have what's called paste in place. So the problem is when you duplicate, it offsets it. But if I instead click on it and then just do Command C to copy it and then right click on it, then I will have paste in place as an option. And when I paste in place, it puts it exactly in the same place. So I want that. And then I want to turn it. See, it's up at the top here. Then I just want to turn it off. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the white. I'm going to select it, Command C or Control C on a PC, and then paste in place. And it puts it on top. Then I turn that off. Okay, now while I have everything else turned off, I can select both of them and I can subtract one from the other, just like that. There we go, subtract. So now I have that very complex shape done for me. The problem is I can adjust the outside anchors, but it won't let me adjust where I subtracted from. Right. So, so you want to do that before you subtract, but that's why we made those copies in case I wanted to change that. And of course I can still subtract more from the master shape. So I'm pretty close to being finished now. I'm going to turn them all on again and just add the last few shapes to subtract and to add. And now you've seen kind of all the ways I can use the pin tool and the merging and subtraction tools. Now these layers I'm going to keep turned off, right? Those are just for use later if I need to rebuild something. So that you start with that master layer, or that master shape. Okay, so now... What else can I build? I'm going to use, instead of the, the pen tool, I'm going to show you the pencil tool. Though it's not my favorite here because you can't ever contain something fully. It seems like a big lacking, but this is basically a freehand pen tool. So if I start drawing with it, it will plot anchor points for me. I just click and drag. Now it's doing it all with straights, but of course I can then change those later to curves. And then I let go, and it's not a contained path. You see, there's no, actually no way to get it to be contained, but if I change it from border to background, it will fill itself in. So I just lose control of that edge. And then if I double click on it, hold down shift, I can smooth it out to curves. And then that does a pretty good job. Merging with my master path, my master shape. And I can merge them, but there's no real reason to me for me to merge them yet until everything is perfected. So I'm just going to make sure those overlaps are clean. So far, so good. <laughs> 